month of countdown, we have the tomb of Jin Shi Huang. In 1974 in China, a group of farmers came across something quite amazing. So they were digging a well when they dug out a life-size terracotta soldier. After that, archaeologists spent four decades excavating the site. They found an army of thousands of these terracotta soldiers. Experts say there's more than eight thousands of them. The soldiers are guarding the tomb of Jin Shi Huang, oh, which is off limits to everyone, including scientists. Why? Well, it's rumored that it's protected by deadly booby traps. Not only that, there's a high concentration of mercury in the tomb, which is very deadly for anyone if they entered without the proper equipment. So the tomb is off limits for any and everyone. In our ninth spot, we have Discovery Island. Discovery Island is now an abandoned park by Disney that opened in 1974. But before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, comment down below, you know the drill, it really helps us out. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake by Disney World. In order to get to it, visitors would take a boat from Disney World. The park was known for having an incredible amount of exotic birds from all over the world. The attraction was basically like a miniature zoo, but in 1989 it was revealed that Disney wasn't taking proper care of the animals on the island, and the employees were caught doing some messed up things to the animals. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened, and people just really didn't care about Discovery Island anymore. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons, and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now the island is just completely abandoned. Its structures are covered in nature, but it's illegal to go there. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and you'll be arrested if caught trespassing. There are a number of examples of people getting arrested for trying to get on this island. Just last year, some man was arrested after he was found camping out there. In April of 2020, Richard McGuire was arrested for visiting the island as well. Kind of makes you wonder why that area is so highly patrolled. Coming in at number eight, we have Lascaux Caves in France. The Lascaux Caves are a series of complex caves located in northwestern France. Back in the day, four teens were exploring the caves with their dog when they found a narrow entrance into a cavern. In the cavern, they discovered a plethora of prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. They mainly depict animals. In 1948, the caves were open to the public, but in 1963, they were closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. And then algae started growing all over them. So in order to preserve the history, they prevent anyone from going there. The only exception is a small number of scientists. They can go there only a few days a month in order to study the paintings. Other than that, no one else can go. Moving on to number seven, we have Room 39 in North Korea. North Korea has its fair share of secrets. Kim Jong-un likes it that way. He doesn't want anyone knowing what he's up to. Now, Room 39 is a top secret, highly guarded location inside of the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang. Journalist Kelly Olson said, and I quote, Room 39 is one of the most secret organizations in arguably the world's most secretive state. Only a few select people have access to this room. It was created in the late 1970s and no one really knows what goes on in there. But it's reported that it's very critical to the Kim family. And I'm sure you can imagine what the guards would do if you were caught trespassing or attempting to break into the room. It would not end pretty. Moving on to number six, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are US presidents, government members, and business leaders. You get the picture. Some very wealthy men. Some say that this is like a cult. Everything that goes on there is top secret. Apparently, what happens at the Bohemian Grove stays at the Bohemian Grove. In 2000, filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed a Bohemian Grove ceremony. It was called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds very creepy. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Paviglia, Italy. This island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages, when the plague took the lives of thousands, 
This island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. According to some reports, 50% of the island's soil consists of human remains. Then, in the 1920s, the island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then, over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It's said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on Earth. Now the island is just abandoned and no one is allowed to visit it. I mean, you can, but you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. In the end, it's not really worth it. In our fourth spot, we have Pripyat, Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of obvious why this one's on the list. So Pripyat was a city in Ukraine that had a population of 49,000 people. However, on April 27th, 1986, all residents were forced to evacuate following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was the most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster since they were the closest to the power plant. They were the ones most exposed to the radioactive chemicals. Due to the radiation, the city will be left untouched for thousands of more years until it's safe enough to return. But of course, there have been a number of explorers that have gone there to check out the city's ruins. But like I said, because of the radiation levels, it's deemed too unsafe to go to. And people are warned not to. In our third spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are a series of tunnels located under Paris, France. In the 18th century, the catacombs were created when the Paris cemeteries were full. They needed a place to bury the dead. As a result, they buried the dead underground in a series of tunnels. There is approximately 150 miles of tunnels in a maze-like fashion, making it extremely easy to get lost. Ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? Now, a portion of these tunnels are still accessible today and have attracted numerous explorers. But there's an area in the Paris catacombs that is completely blocked off from the public. It's because it's extremely easy for you to get lost with the number of pathways they have. Also, there's over 6 million people buried there, so maybe not go there. A couple of years ago, two young explorers went into the band area and went missing for three full days. Finally, the authorities, along with their team of rescue dogs, found the boys in the tunnels. Thankfully, they both survived, only suffering from hypothermia. It could have ended much worse. In our second spot, we have Pluto's Gate in Turkey. Back in the day, it was believed that anything that entered this area would be killed by the god Pluto himself. On a number of occasions, animals like bulls would be led into this cavern. They would never make it back out alive. As a result, people were terrified to go anywhere near there. But a couple of years ago, it was discovered what was actually causing this. Scientists noticed that at night, the CO2 concentration would become heavier in the air. CO2 is not normally toxic, but in high concentrations, it is, and will starve the body of oxygen. So yes, if you go there, the level of CO2 is so strong that you could die from asphyxiation. It's super dangerous, and as a result, people are banned from going there. And in our number one spot, we have Wyndham, Australia. Located northeast of Perth, Australia, Wyndham is considered one of Australia's deadliest towns. This is because of its blue asbestos problem. In 1937, blue asbestos was discovered in the city's gorge. Years later, miners were unearthing tons of asbestos from the ground. It wasn't until 1978 that the government started pushing people out of their homes. They realized how deadly it was for them to be living there. It was increasing their risk for cancer, and in some cases, people were already developing lung cancer just from living there. Now, it would cost the town about $2.43 million to get rid of this asbestos problem, so instead of doing that, they just shut down the town completely. In 2006, the government turned off power to the town and had its name removed from maps and road signs. In fact, all roads that once led to this town are now closed off. If you do choose to enter this town, you'll find tons of huge warning signs advising you to turn back. Number 10, Sandy Island. This island's located in the South Pacific. Apparently, maybe it's not. We're not really sure yet. It's only been visited by a handful of people throughout history, but it will most likely remain uncharted forever, officially. See, the island seemingly disappeared. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, someone lost an island. They're like, uh, wait, was it this? 
west or east? I thought it was, the island's gone. Today we have islands appearing out of the ocean, but back then, this one vanished. Back in the late 19th century, Sandy Island was noted on a number of maps and nautical charts, of course. But years ago, people went to go check it out and they found nothing in the area. Yep, yeah, just water. Just a mystery South Pacific island. Yeah, we love those. Let's book a flight, I guess. It was located, supposedly, between Australia and New Caledonia. But where could it have gone, right? What's the deal here? What happened? Was it purposely put on the wrong location on maps? Or was it a human error? Either way, I want answers. Maybe it's just the planet flooding. It's probably that. It's probably that. That's sad. Number nine, Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok is one of Earth's lost worlds, okay? Despite it being the world's sixth largest lake by volume, and us living so close to a massive lake, I'm like, what? There was another one? Who knew? We don't talk about this one often because it's a subglacial lake that has been covered in a thick layer of ice for millions and millions of years. I'm Canadian, and I'm like, you know what? I'll still swim in it. Let's do it. I'll do anything. Because of this thick layer of ice, there's little to no sunlight that's actually able to reach the water. But despite this and freezing cold temperature, it's believed that somehow this lake is home to many undiscovered species. It's extremely difficult to search this water because of the, you know, ice. And scientists thankfully don't want to contaminate the water with things like antifreeze or anything like that just to find out. So for now, the lake and all it has to offer, it's going to stay unknown and unexplored. So no tubing anytime soon, I don't think. Number eight, the Amazon rainforest. Here we go. I'm itchy thinking about this one. The Amazon rainforest is massive. It covers a total area of 2.5 million square miles, right? It's bigger than we can even imagine. And it's home to the most beautiful animals and wildlife. Now, due to its size and dangers, a large part of the Amazon rainforest is uncharted. We have no idea what it looks like in any sense. In fact, it's considered one of the least explored areas on Earth. One of the reasons why this is the case is because not only is the forest filled with deadly animals like jaguars and anacondas, Brazilian wandering spiders, everything that makes you go, ugh, nope, stuff like that. But also, explorers would have a tough time getting access to enough food and clean drinking water because, you know, it's still the Amazon. There's not gonna be a Starbucks around where you can like, can you just fill this up, please? It's just water, thanks so much. Can you make me a milkshake at 6 a.m.? Thanks. And not only that, the Amazon gets rain all year round, which can cause heavy flooding. Trench foot, that's probably pretty bad. The water levels can rise and flood and it makes transportation through the area way too dangerous and not worth it. So we're gonna leave it alone for now at least. Number seven, Cape Melville. Cape Melville is located in Australia and it's home to another lost world of Earth, okay? It's just something we have no idea that even exists. Here we go. It truthfully wasn't discovered until recently and that's due to the surrounding, you know, wall of granite boulders that are hundreds of feet tall. That probably has something to do with it, okay? But inside the stone wall, it's amazing. It's mysterious and uncharted. It's this massive rainforest, which is just the coolest thing ever. Because of the more recent discovery and the lack of exploration, this area has been preserved in its natural state, which is something not easily found on our super populated, disgusting planet. This place is only accessible by helicopter, which is kind of badass if you really want to do it, and it's only seen one major scientific exploration yet. But on this one adventure, at least three new species were discovered including the leaf-tailed gecko. Yeah, check this guy out. We found a dinosaur, how lovely is that? I'm sure there's gonna be further research of this area to learn about all these endemic species that live there and you know, to study how they evolved to fit this interesting ecosystem. But for now, yeah, let's just leave it alone. Looks like something from Game of Thrones, it's horrible. Number six, La Rinconada. This town is located near the Peruvian Andes. It's very close to a gold mine and it's actually the highest permanent settlement in the world at 5,100 meters above sea level. Between 2001 and 2009, the population of the town increased greatly because the price of gold rose 235% during that time. So yeah, people are going to come out. Now because of that elevation, the town has an alpine tundra climate and an average temperature of around one degree Celsius. So it's not comfortable. Many of those who work for the gold mines here work under a pretty horrible condition. They work 25 days in the month for no pay. And then for five days in the month, they can work for themselves and they're allowed to take as much ore as they can carry on their shoulders alone. It's horrible. There's no guarantee that the ore will have any gold in it also. This is a terrible system and it's why many many of the town's residents still live in poverty. The town is a six hour bus ride from the nearest city on an unpaved road, and there's not really a regular bus schedule which goes back and forth, so it's gonna be a really hard place to get to. Number five, Palmerston Island. We're probably not gonna see a season of Survivor here. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. Palmerston Island is a coral paradise located in the Cook Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Now, Palmerston is a very islet in a series of smaller islets that are on a set of coral rings. It's basically built on a coral reef that encloses a lagoon. It's the hardest place to get to. The only one of these islets that's inhabited, it's one that's called home, ironically. The closest island to Palmerston is Rarotonga, which is the capital of the Cook Islands, and it would be about two day sailing trip to make it to the 500 kilometer distance, so 
got to have those arms warmed up, I guess. But if you aren't already on that island or planning to stop at both of these islands, the next closest trip would be about an eight day sail from Tahiti. Now, since the island is so small, there of course is no airports, so ships are the only way to get here, and supply ships only visit the inhabited island a few times a year. The reef only allows room for smaller boats to pass through, which makes any kind of larger ship unsafe to pass through. Obviously, it's not worth it to even take a large yacht. The island does see a tropical climate, but it's very exposed to tropical cyclones as well, which of course can cause a whole set of problems. So, worth it? Probably not. Just avoid it. Number four, Valet du Javari. When I do videos on these isolated tribes of these worlds, we always mention Valet du Javari quite a few times because it's the home to the highest concentration of uncontacted tribes in the world. And that's part of the reason we know so little about it. And it's clear that this region has everything we need to sustain life, as many people live entirely off of the land and all it has to offer. But much of it remains a mystery, of course, which truthfully is probably a good thing. If we got involved, we'd probably throw up Disneyland there or something horrible. Aside from this area being protected in order to preserve the uncontacted tribes, the area is also surrounded by rivers that often flood or have currents that are too strong to even travel through, which doesn't make it easy to even get to. So again, leave it alone. Number three, Mariana's Trench. Around 71% of the earth is covered in water, and yet the oceans are the places we know the least about, which is kind of terrifying when you think about it. Mariana's Trench is located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, just east of the Philippines, and it's the deepest part of our planet's ocean. It's scary to think of, it's really, I don't like it. James Cameron went there once and he's like, okay, I'm gonna make five avatars. What did he see, right? I have some questions. The trench is in the shape of a crescent and it's about 2,550 kilometers long and 69 kilometers wide. Its exact depth is unknown, but what we do know is that if we took Mount Everest, we'd be able to just fully put it in the trench, and its summit would still be underwater by more than two kilometers. So, yeah, horrifyingly deep. The pressure is so deep in the ocean that it's far too great for humans to withstand. The temperature is also just above freezing, and it's impossibly dark. We're actually closer to tourists visiting Mars on an average than we are with tourists visiting Mariana's Trench. You know what I mean? That's a weird truth. There have been a very small number of divers who have explored what is called the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest known spot of the trench, but of course not with Without super heavy duty equipment, like a you know massive submarine, and no one's been able to stay there for an extended amount of time, because you know they'll get squished. Most of it still remains a mystery. Yeah, anything that lives down there too, also a complete mystery. Some deep sea squid, I'm all set. Number two, Singhi National Park. Singhi National Park is located on the western edge of Madagascar, but today I wanna to talk about the two large geographical features in said park, which are Big Singhi and Little Singhi. Now Singhi can be translated into English as roughly where one cannot walk bare feet. And when you see this, you'll realize why it's named such. These rock formations are just jagged. It looks like something you'd find in outer space. They have these deep ruts, into them by the groundwater, which has left them totally unable to be walked on or through. It's just, like I said, it's like something from outer space. This whole area is incredibly fascinating and it's home to many endemic species because of its, you know, unusual geography. Some of these species are found only within extremely small areas within the Singhis because the summit, slope, and base of one limestone needle will all form completely different ecosystems, which is unbelievable. Every area has like its own creature that just comes out of nowhere. The Singhis are a perfect example of what happens when humans leave a place alone and let nature and the earth just exist, right? Minus Disneyland's. It would be an amazing place to go to and explore, but because of the nature and the limestone needles, you can't just walk around with their crocs. So again, leave it alone. And finally, number one, Siwa Oasis. Siwa is an urban oasis between the Katara Depression and the Great Sand Sea in the Western Desert. The oasis is one of Egypt's most isolated settlements, but it's still home to around 33,000 people. The residents have developed a unique and isolated desert culture and language called Siwi, but they're also fluent in an Egyptian dialect of Arabic. The oasis isn't necessarily a super popular tourist destination as the closest city is Cairo, and the oasis is still a five hour bus ride away, and obviously it's in the middle of the desert. But those who do take the trip certainly are not disappointed. If visiting, you can enjoy some locally grown dates and olives, which I can only imagine are just incredible. You can also swim in Cleopatra's Bath, which is a mineral spring, and you can even stay at the Desert Eco Lodge, which is built from mud and salt. That's beautiful. Tourism is actually a vital source of income for the oasis, so visitors here are welcome. I wanna finish on a nice number one where it's like, you know what, this one you actually can go to if you're brave enough. Because of how isolated Siwa is, the culture and traditions of the people who live here really have been preserved, which would make it such an interesting and wonderful place to visit if you have the opportunity. At number 10, Bohemian Grove. The only way you're getting to this super exclusive club is if you're a very powerful man. Bohemian Grove is a private club for the most powerful men in the US, located on a restricted 2,700 acre campground on Bohemian Ave in Monte Rio, California. 
Every July, its members travel to the grounds for a two week retreat to relax and specifically not network. There is little known about what happens during the retreat. One thing powerful men are good at is keeping things hidden. The club's all male membership includes many artists, musicians, prominent business leaders, government officials, former presidents, and senior media executives. Members are also allowed to bring guests and even rent out the grounds for its off season private events. Sorry, if your interest has been sparked, good luck getting anywhere near Bohemian Grove. It's protected by security year round, with the club employing ex military personnel to secure the area. They also utilize high end equipment like thermal cameras and vibration sensing alarm systems. Some presidents that have visited are George Bush, Richard Nixon, and Ronald Reagan. Basically, there's no chance of getting in unless you have some pretty important friends. Number nine, the Coca Cola Vault. Coca Cola is one of the biggest brands in the world. The corporation was founded in 1892, so the recipe has been around for over 120 years. It definitely has undergone some tweaks since the 1800s, but now it doesn't contain illegal substances, so it really only changed for the better. The secret formula is located inside World of Coca Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. While you can absolutely visit the museum itself, showcasing the history of the company, the actual vault that holds the formula is off limits. The actual recipe is located inside of a metal box inside of a 6.6 foot high vault, which is then further protected by a barrier, and the entire area has surveillance with armed guards. The door to the vault can only be opened by a keypad with a hand scanner. It sounds a bit extreme to take all these measures over the recipe for Coke, but with the company bringing in over $42 billion in 2022, the extra security makes total sense. I never thought about seeing the formula of Coke, but now that I know it's in a highly guarded fancy safe, I've never wanted to see something more. Number 8. Granite Mountain Records Vault The world's largest collection of genealogical records lives in a secure vault located quite literally in the mountains near Salt Lake City, Utah. The Granite Mountain Records Vault was built in 1965 by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. The purpose of the vault is to preserve and protect records of importance to the church, like its vast collection of family history microfilms. This is an extremely secure facility with no public access allowed. What we do know is that it's home to 2.4 million rolls of microfilm containing approximately 3.5 billion images of family history records. I guess when the Mormon church says they're a family centered faith, they aren't kidding. The church is collecting all of these microfilmed images in order to digitize them and turn them into digital records available through FamilySearch.org. Some people think there is more going on in that facility than we're being told, with conspiracy theories and suspicious surrounding the whole operation. The vault is located under 700 feet of solid mountain stone, with three tunnels and four cross tunnels inside, spanning over 65,000 square feet. They also have reinforced entrance doors that weigh 14 tons each and were said to be able to withstand a nuclear blast. These factors are what really led people to being skeptical of their operations because A, that's a lot of room for converting microfilms, B, that's a lot of security for the names of the deceased, and C, more recent images of the vault seem to show they've expanded the facility to now have five entrances instead of three. Some thoughts surrounding what else is stored there are significant artifacts, ancient relics, or even a bunker. Maybe the expansion is just for expanding operations, but who knows, maybe they really are hiding something else in that vault. At number 7, Area 51. The widely known name refers to that of a highly classified United States Air Force facility located in Nevada, which is highly prohibited to those without authorization. The fact that it's a government facility that is super off limits and highly guarded has led people to famously associate Area 51 with aliens. For decades now, the facility has been the eye of a conspiracy theory storm, with people convinced that aliens and their technology exist behind its walls. Being told you can't go somewhere or that something is a secret only makes you more interested to know about it. There have been many books, TV shows, and even plans online for massive raids trying to get a glimpse of what lies beyond the very prominent warning signs to no success. Upon looking at Area 51, it appears like the only protection against unwanted guests is the many warning signs, but apparently not a single thing goes unnoticed. Beyond the gates, cameras see every angle watching everything below. Locals say the base knows every desert tortoise and jackrabbit that hops the fence. No matter how interested you may be, only a select few have access to what goes on there, causing so many theories and speculations. Who knows, maybe it's alien experiments, maybe it's the most mundane boring work we could ever imagine. Either way, we aren't going to be finding out anytime soon. Number 6. Cheyenne Mountain Complex It's located at Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station or CMAF within the Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The CMAF 
that falls under Air Force Base Command and hosts the activities of several tenant units. At the height of the Cold War, the idea of a hardened command center was thought of as a defense against long range Soviet bombers. The Army Corps of Engineers supervised the excavation of Cheyenne Mountain and the construction of an operational center. The facility became fully operational as the NORAD Combat Operations Center in early 1967. Since it's a big old place for government stuff, Cheyenne Mountain Complex is protected and closed to the public. It's located under 2,000 feet of granite with six tunnels, each three stories tall. It's also secured against seismic activity and nuclear explosions. So basically, it's pretty high on the list of places I would like to be during a zombie apocalypse. It has two main blast doors, which are three and a half feet thick and weigh over 20 tons. These massive doors close in times of emergency and have only been shut once during 9-11. Since this complex is home to so many important operations, like a space control center and national warning facility, it's locked and guarded to the nines. That being said, since we know some of what's going on down there, it's far less desirable to visit. At number 5, Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. Located on the northern Oregon coast of the United States, also known as Terrible Tilly or just Tilly, this is one lighthouse that you can't visit. Tilly gained its nickname from the ferocious storms and difficulties facing the lighthouse keepers. Tillamook Rock rises nearly 100 feet from the sea and is located 20 miles south of the mouth of the Columbian River. Building the lighthouse in the first place was rough. The first person hired to take on the project was Master Mason and lighthouse builder John Trewavis. Unfortunately, John ended up being swept out to sea after falling off the rock before he could get far. After this incident, craftsmen were reluctant to work on the lighthouse, but construction foreman Charles Valentine stepped up with a crew of eight. Once on the rock, the men worked under horrible conditions. One day, the wind was so bad it swept away their supply house and left workers stranded for 16 days. After preparing the rock, the construction of Tilly took over 100 days to complete. Tillamook Rock Lighthouse began operations in January 1881. With a starting budget of just $50,000, Tilly cost closer to $125,000 in the end. Duty at Tillamook Rock meant isolation, horrible storms, and hazardous environment. On top of that, supplies sent to the rock were often delayed for days or even weeks. It was decommissioned in 1957 due to the extensive wear and tear. The lighthouse has bounced between a few private owners since shutting off its light. Even if you wanted to visit Tilly today, you'd have to resort to a helicopter because of the harsh waters. The rock is even off limits to its owners come time for the seabird nesting season. And number four, Dulce Base. Like Area 51, Dulce Base is the subject of conspiracy theories claiming that a jointly operated human and alien underground facility exists. Apparently, the facility lies under the Archuleta Mesa Mountain on the Colorado New Mexico border near the town of Dulce, New Mexico. On the surface, Dulce is just your average small town, so small it doesn't even have a single traffic light. According to the bizarre claims, the small town is just the tip of the iceberg. The alleged massive underground facility facility is said to be home to unimaginable experiments and technologies. For the extreme alien believers, we are all overlooking a high tech world full of aliens. According to the conspiracy theorists, the Dulce subterranean base is a 7 story compound that houses human animal hybrids, human alien hybrids, and extremely advanced technologies. It is possible that it's all made up, but if the government really was experimenting with aliens, it would make sense that they do it under a mountain near a very small town. One thing I find interesting about the Dulce base is that these theories are not new. First claims of the base's existence date all the way back to the 1930s. The rumors of alien intervention didn't start up until the 70s when a former state police trooper named Gabe Valdez documented unexplained cattle mutilations in the area. There have also been claims of UFO sightings and other paranormal activity in the area over the years. Secret aliens or not, it sounds like there's definitely something strange going on in Dulce that I don't want to look any further into. Number 3, Fort Knox. I bet you've heard at least least once in your life someone make a reference to something being harder to get into than Fort Knox. And there's a reason for this. Fort Knox is a United States Army installation in Kentucky, south of Louisville. The reason it's so hard to get into Fort Knox is because of the Bullion Depository, a fortified vault located adjacent to the Fort Knox Army Post. It's operated by the United States Mint Police and it's super well known for its physical security. The depository was built back in 1936 and is operated by the United States Department of the Treasury. The excessive security is in place because it's home to over half the entire country's gold reserves. Early shipments of gold totaling almost 13,000 metric tons were escorted by combat cars to the depository. In the past, it's also been home to other precious items like the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence. Fort Knox
docks is so heavily protected and secure that the vicinity is off limits to visitors. Even the president has limitations. In fact, only one president has ever been allowed entry and that was Franklin Roosevelt back in 1943. Along with the heavy duty physical barriers and fences, the government pays $5 million annually just for security. Number 2. North Brother Island This tiny island in New York City is located smack dab in the middle of the East River between the Bronx and Rikers Island. It was the site of the infamous Riverside Hospital for Quarantinable Diseases. If you've ever heard of Typhoid Mary, this is the place where she spent her final days and finally succumbed to her namesake illness in 1938. After World War II, the island was repurposed as housing for veterans and their families. Then it transitioned to being a rehabilitation center for adolescent substance use, which ended up closing in the 60s amid allegations of fraud. After being home to many dark but important facilities, the entire North Brothers Island was closed permanently to the public and became a bird sanctuary. That being said, photographer Christopher Payne was able to go to the island in 2006 after being granted access by the New York City Department of Recreation. The photos he captured of the island are a little haunting, especially with its history of rehab centers and hospitals for the disease. These photos are interesting to see, but do not make me want to visit the abandoned island even if I could. The whole place looks like it's been taken over by, well, birds, and it's crazy that it's so close to the hustle and bustle of the city. Many people have stepped foot on the North Brother Island over the years, but now the only way to get a glimpse is through Payne's photos or if you have wings and a beak. And at number 1, Nihau Island. This island has been privately owned for over a 100 years with only an estimated 170 residents. The invite only island sparked so much interest from travelers across the world due to its extreme exclusivity, commonly referred to as Hawaii's Forbidden Island. It is the westernmost main and seventh largest inhabited island in all of Hawaii. Nihau is also a crucial habitat for some endangered plant species. The island was purchased by Elizabeth St. Clair in 1864 for just $10,000, which would be the equivalent to about 170000 in 2021. St. Clair purchased it from the Kingdom of Hawaii, and the ownership has been passed down for generations currently belonging to her grandsons, the Robinson brothers. The island is off limits to all outsiders unless the brothers Bruce and Keith personally invite you for a visit. The people of Nihau are noted for their remarkable craftsmanship and mainly speak in Hawaiian. The reason they have kept the island off limits to the outside world is due to a promise made to a former Hawaiian king. The promise was to protect the island from the mainland and the rest of the world to maintain the beloved heritage, and that's exactly what they've done. To this day, Nihau has rejected the use of modern technologies and survives without electricity, running water, internet, doors, restaurants, paved roads, or cars. A modern day ancient civilization. It would be fascinating to see how they do things over on Nihau, but it's nice to know they've kept their promise for so long. Kicking off the list at number 10, WikiLeaks. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto, we go to work, we clock in, we clock out. This is a physical place that we go to. But where do places like WikiLeaks live? You know, where, where are all those odd safe houses, really? Well, apparently in Stockholm, buried around 100 feet below street level as an old nuclear bunker. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banhoff. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks which is pretty hilarious. Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. This guy will never get bored. If Netflix ever goes down, he's good. He's got like two weeks of movies. Number nine, King Tut's artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum opened up in 2021, and while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, the artifacts discovered with him initially, will all be on display. Yeah, this is huge. Prior to this museum being open, we only saw around 150 artifacts from his tomb in entirety. They took all these pieces on tour, but now this museum will house thousands of artifacts. It's the final resting place for King King Tut's collection. That's over 7,000 square meters of just Egyptian history all on display for you. It's pretty amazing. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum or if you saw this King Tut world tour live, nice. I'm jealous. I'm really jealous. Number eight, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why? Really, why? It's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India. And while most islands are shrinking or disappearing, this one actually grew back in 2004. Yeah, the island actually lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so it's getting bigger. 
Gain an extra kilometer, nice. The inhabitants on this island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire yet, but somehow this tribe has thrived for this long. If we try and get close, they will try and drive anybody away with deadly force. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. We don't even know how many people are on this island to this day. We have zero clue. They aren't exactly these ruthless hunters per se, they're just protecting their land, like they've done so for thousands of years. They're protecting this island from us, pretty much, and they'll continue to do so. Yeah, we're not getting close anytime soon. Number seven, Lascaux Cave. If you didn't visit this cave back in, say, 1963 or sooner, you lost your chance, my friend. Forever, yeah, officially closed. The Lascaux cave system is now a World Heritage Site in France. These cave paintings are 17,300 years old. Paintings that depict cattle, bison, stags, you name it. They're beautiful, they're complex, and of course, they're extremely old. So old that the cave was closed to the public forever in 1963 after it declared human presence wasn't too healthy for its Art, yeah. Our breathing would eventually cause this art to fade away. Plus, I'm sure somebody would have snuck in by now with a Sharpie had it remained open. 17,000 year old paintings, protect these for another 17,000, please. Number six, Surtsey Island. When it comes to new things in life, it's pretty rare we get a new island. Yeah, how lucky are we? We're even luckier that Disney didn't build a resort here. Nice, because now scientists get to study what an island looks like without human interaction for a change. Yeah, oh, we're nervous now, eh? We're like, oh, what's gonna happen with it? Is it nice? Is, it, is the air better? Surtsey Island on Iceland. As of right now, it's only open to a few scientists and geologists. Everybody else, beat it, pal, get lost. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, coincidence, at the same year that the caves closed. And scientists all have one rule on this island. No seeds, nothing. Choose something else, anything else, please. One guy accidentally pooped out a tomato seed and almost lost his job. The guy almost ruined the whole operation because he ate a tomato. What a stressful job. Better hold it, I guess, if you work there. Number five, Niha Island. Located in Hawaii, this beautiful island is also not a sandals resort, yet. Nice, that's, a, that's good stuff, what do you know? In fact, the population of this island is only a whopping 170. It's also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since, hence the small population. The thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit the islands and a ban was put in place. So now you couldn't enter the island or leave. Yep, better pack your nicest flip-flops, buddy, you're staying. Nobody got sick, which is a good thing, but now if you want to enter the island or whatever, you have to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're extremely rich, you can't just buy your way onto this island. There's something going on there. For now, we'll just, you know, observe from a bush from afar. We'll just sit there with a telescope and have FOMO. Number four, the Shanghai Complex. Most of the details on this one are still unknown. How fun is that? Nice, we love a nice mystery here on top 10. The Shanghai Complex is a massive underground bunker, as you could have guessed. It's supposedly able to fit 200,000 civilians comfortably. Yeah, it's over 1 million square feet, and it was built in case a nuclear attack were to ever happen. Probably, probably a great call. Probably some good stuff. This was a newspaper article back in 2006. Now imagine reading about this one morning while you're having your coffee, just all of a sudden an underground bunker. You're like, do we get tickets? How does this work? The Shanghai Morning Post touched on the new complex saying, it's got massive protective doors, everything you need, electricity, great ventilation. It can fully support life for two weeks. And yes, it's very secure. No one's getting in or out. Number three, Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And a lot of these games always have a similar theme, I realized. I was like a post-apocalyptic, a lot of survivors and vaults. I'm referring to Fallout, that was definitely my go-to game. It's stressful but engaging, and in real life we have a global seed vault, and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. That's nice, that has a, has a nice ring to it, sounds calming. This is where humans will store food crops like all of them. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the Earth all of a sudden were to get wiped out by white walkers or all the ice melts, something bad happens and we're all doomed, well, this vault will be good to go long term. All that water that has since, you know, eliminated humanity, plenty of hydration for future crops. April showers, I guess? Number two, Denver International Airport. Since its opening in 1995, Denver International has been the subject of many myths. Some are pretty bizarre. I had to include it on our list today. Lizard people, that's the talk of the town. Apparently, they like to build airports on their off time, whether or not, you know, ruling the Illuminati. 
Yeah, so far it's believed the Freemasons built this airport, or the Illuminati, or lizards, the New World Order, something, someone, I don't know, it's haunting. The airport itself is massive, it covers around 52 square miles. There's gargoyles that are hanging out in your baggage claim, so yeah, the art displayed is odd, that I get. It does seem creepy for sure. But the airport has started to lean into it almost, they laugh at this stuff. They have a conspiracy month that began back in 2016, so they're like, yeah, yeah, screw it, whatever you're saying, sure. They even showed a screening of close encounters of the third kind at the airport. What, imagine you're traveling and this happens, I'd be like, what, where am I? What year did I land in? I would lean into it too, honestly. If I was hiding a secret bunker, the only thing I would do is lean into it. You know, kind of like, number one, Area 51. Of course we have to talk about it. What is, is it real? Are there aliens? They're on the news, is this a real place? Remember that Area 51 raid when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? That big raid, you know, that massive raid with everybody? Everyone! We're not here for photos! We're here to rescue the aliens! Rescue. Okay, so it didn't it didn't work out thing. I don't think I don't think we got in. We didn't raid Area 51, obviously. I mean, I don't know. A handful of gamers and tinfoil hats can't overthrow Area 51 military. Who'd have thunk? Because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. That's why. It's common knowledge at this point, but why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What were they hiding? What did they want to break into? We don't know, but we're trying weirdly? I don't know, Reddit wants to find out. Would you ever break into Area 51 if you had the opportunity? Sound off below, that's how I'm gonna leave this video. Number 10, the Hollywood sign, California. I think you all know what I'm talking about when I bring up the Hollywood sign. Now, you might be confused, it's a huge tourist attraction. Yes, it is, but there are areas around the sign that are prohibited. The closest you can get to the sign is behind and above it, where you can enjoy the fabulous view of the city. Why can't you get up right and personal though? Well, the sign is on a rough, steep terrain, so there are barriers to prevent unauthorized access. In the year 2000, the Los Angeles Police Department actually installed a security system featuring motion detention and closed circuited cameras. Any movement in the marked restricted areas triggers an alarm that notifies the police, therefore you cannot touch the sign. This place is heavily surveilled as it's monitored 24 7 by the Los Angeles Police and Fire Departments and Park Rangers. Although some people have gotten through security to vandalize the sign, I mean does anyone remember Hollyweed on January 1st 2017? Despite that though, it remains mostly prohibited. Number 9, Roberts Island, Suffolk County, New York. Located just off of Long Island, this private island is not only extremely valuable, it's impossible to access. The 435 acre teardrop of land belongs to billionaire businessman Louis Bacon and is thought to be worth around $500 million. He purchased it in 1993 at the bankruptcy court auction for $11 million. He has made significant investments into restoring the neglected island, going so far as to import full grown oak trees to replace ones harvested for lumber years later. Some non native grasses were removed from the island and replaced and hunters reduced an overgrown deer population. The island also has the healthiest turtle population in the state, which includes the eastern mud turtle. Lewis has spent years rebuilding the ecosystem, and he believes that allowing others on the island will lead to its destruction, so no one can visit. And I mean, that is a pretty good reason, no? Number 8. Lascaux Caves, France. Lascaux Caves is a network of caves near the village of Montigna. Over 600 wall paintings cover the interior walls and ceilings of the cave. The paintings represent primarily large animals, typical local contemporary fauna that correspond with the fossil record of the Upper Paleolithic in the area. They are the combined effort of many generations, and with continued debate, the age of the paintings is now usually estimated at around 17,000 years. They're beautiful. But unfortunately, the cave was sealed to the common public following 1963 in order to preserve the site, which is listed as a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. However, in order to allow everyone to admire the masterpieces of prehistory, a reconstruction of the Leto site has been made so you can do a virtual tour, which is still pretty cool. Archaeologists concluded that human proximity might ruin the ancient work of art, so you can only enjoy it through your screen. Number 7. The White's Club UK Okay. okay, so men can enter this place, but women can't. And if you're non-binary, I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> 
<laughs> At White's, the club is so exclusive that few have ever managed to sneak inside and find out what really goes on in there. There are incredibly certain places in the world where women are forbidden access, the best known probably being gentlemen's clubs, which are very popular within British culture. Founded in 1693 and located at 37 St. James Street in Piccadilly, the members of the White's Club include political leaders, senior bankers, and even heirs to the British throne, so yeah, Prince William is a part of this club. The restriction on women is so strict, only the late Queen Elizabeth has ever managed to gain entry, but I mean, she was the queen. It's not like they could have said no. According to the Telegraph in 2013, David Cameron voluntarily left the select club, saying, I'm dismayed the club does not accept women as members. I find that inexplicable in this day and age, I really do. The members of London's oldest and most elitist gentlemen's club has shrunk to 500, and its bar has been open for over 200 years. Number 6. Doomsday Vault, Norway The Doomsday Vault is a seed bank located in the middle of the Arctic Selbard Archipelago. There are three vaults leading off from the chamber, but only one is currently in use, and its door is covered in a thick layer of ice, hinting at the sub-zero temperatures inside. In here, the seeds are stored in vacuum-packed silver packets and test tubes in large boxes that are neatly stacked on floor-to-ceiling shelves. These boxes potentially hold the keys to the future of global food security. These seeds are here in case of a catastrophic event. Now, over the past 50 years, agricultural practices have changed dramatically, but while crop yields have increased, biodiversity has decreased to the point that now only about 30 crops provide 95% of human food energy needs. The US has lost over 90% of its fruit and vegetable varieties since the 1900s. This monoculture nature of agriculture leaves food supplies more susceptible to threats such as diseases and drought. Due to all this, the vault isn't open to the public and it can allow entry to special guests, but only on certain days. Number 5. Isle Grand Shrine, Japan Japan is known worldwide for its shrine culture and has nearly 80,000 shrines in total. The most prominent out of all is the Isle Grand Shrine. It's one of the most expensive temples in Japan, credited to its architectural magnificence. To keep the Shinto traditions, which go back to the 8th century, this temple is reconstructed once every 20 years. That's why this temple is so expensive. Only members of the royal family are granted access to this prestigious ancient representation sacred to the Japanese. Due to this, the general public is not allowed beyond the sight of the thatched roofs of the central structures hidden behind four tall wooden fences. Number 4. North Brother Island North Brother Island is a small island located in New York City's East River between the mainland Bronx and Rikers Island. Now, not only is this island forbidden, it's also hidden, overrun by weeds and unsafe for the public. Plus, its sensitive ecosystem is much safer without visitors. This dystopian looking island was abandoned 50 years ago, but prior to that, in the mid 19th century, North Brother Island was filled with people. At this time in history, disease and illness were rampant in New York, and this isolated island was the perfect location for the sick to be quarantined. Riverside Hospital was relocated there and had been founded in the 1850s as the smallpox hospital to treat and isolate victims of that disease. Its mission eventually expanded to other quarantinable diseases. Now, the island was also the site of a wreck of the General Suklum, a steamship that burned in 1904, where 1,021 people died either from fire on board the ship or from drowning before the ship beached on the island shores. Safe to say this island has seen a lot of horrors, so much that it has been nicknamed Hell's Gate for its dangerous waters and is rightfully off limits. Number 3. Circe Island, Iceland Circe is a small island situated on the south coast of Iceland. It was created as a consequence of a volcanic explosion that continued for four years. Circe is also known globally for being the newest island on the globe. It was formed just 55 years ago, which meant scientists had the unique opportunity to observe the birth and evolution of an ecosystem from scratch. This fascinating event is precisely what makes its access restricted to the rest of the world. It all began in 1963 when a violent volcanic eruption 32 kilometers south of Iceland resulted in the formation of Circe. Bacteria, fungi, and molds were the first to arrive on the island. 
Greenland. Subsequently, the number of animal and plant species increased exponentially. According to UNESCO, it's estimated that around 89 species of birds and 335 invertebrates populate the area. In order to not alter this development, only researchers are allowed to visit the island. Which again makes a lot of sense, they want to protect this island. But the whole idea of this is just really cool. Number 2. Snake Island, Brazil As per the name, Snake Island is an island in Brazil packed with thousands of poisonous snakes. Yep, just, just load it up all in there. No human even dares to risk their life stepping on Snake Island, and if you were to try, you'd be stupid. Snake Island has a reputation as the most forbidden place in the world, not only in Brazil. This place is so deadly that the government has announced it's prohibited by law to step onto the island. It's calculated that there are nearly 4,000 golden lace heads crawling around the island. These are the most poisonous serpents known on Earth. So even if you were able to go on the island, you'd probably get bitten by a snake and die, which I feel like isn't worth it. I know I wouldn't risk it. And I mean, if a snake doesn't hurt you, the government will as it's illegal to go there, so neither of those sounds like a good option. Plus, who wants to go to a place called Snake Island? Please, stay away from there. <laughs> And coming in at number 1, North Sentinel Island, India. North Sentinel Island is one of the most forbidden places in the world. It is where the Sentinelese tribe resides. The people occupying the island usually resolve to violence to keep their isolation still ongoing. The Sentinelese tribe have existed on the island for more than 50,000 years as per the protection given by the Indian government. This island is stringently forbidden for any visitors of any kind. Throughout history, encounters with the population have been met with violence. In 2006, they ended the lives of two fishermen whose boat had been dried by the current on their shores. According to the Guardian, a three mile restriction zone prevents visitors from entering the territory. And according to Survival, an NGO for the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples, the Indian government has abandoned any plans to contact the sentinels. The entire tribe could be wiped out by diseases to which they have no immunity, which is why authorities respect their wish to remain uncontacted. Starting off this countdown, we have the Coca Cola. Vault. Located in Atlanta in a secure locked vault is the Coca Cola secret recipe. Ravioli, ravioli, give me that formioli, am I right? The recipe for Coca Cola is said to be one of the best kept secrets in the world. Apparently, only two employees know the formula and have access to it. In 1920, the recipe was under lock and key at a New York bank. Then in 1925, it was transferred to the trust company in Atlanta. Then in 2011, they decided to move it into a vault into a museum in Atlanta. The museum garners hundreds of thousands of tourists each year, but they're never allowed through the doors of the vault. Only a select few exclusive Coca-Cola workers are allowed in this vault. I feel like we should make a National Treasure 3 in which Nicolas Cage tries to steal the Coca-Cola recipe from the vault. Who's with me? It'd be fun. In our ninth spot today, we have the White's Club. Now this is an exclusive club in the UK. It was founded in 1693, and only a select few are allowed entry into this club. You know who can't go in? Women. This club is completely off limits to women. The only woman who was ever allowed to go in there was Queen Elizabeth. Now, members of this club include political leaders, senior bankers, and even heirs to the British throne. Now, what goes on in there? No one knows for sure. Only a couple of people have managed to sneak inside. In our eighth spot today, we have Heart Reef. Now, this is a very popular tourist attraction part of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. People loved it because it was a reef shaped as a heart. But unfortunately, people have been banned from going there, including divers and snorkelers. And that's because the reef is at risk. So in order to protect its ecosystem, they don't allow anyone to go there. But if you do want to see the reef and get a good photo of it, they offer helicopter rides above. In our seventh spot, we have the Temple Mount. This temple dates back to the first century BC and contains the Dome of the Rock. This is a gold topped Islamic shrine, very important in Jerusalem. Now, there are already strict rules for those who want to enter the Temple Mount, but there's even stricter rules for those that want to go to the Dome of Rock. Entry is only allowed for people who practice Islam. Non Muslims are not allowed in it at all. One of the reasons as to why it's so sacred is because the Prophet Muhammad is traditionally believed to have ascended into heavens from this site. So out of respect, no tourists are allowed in unless you are Muslim. In our sixth spot, we have Club 33. Now this is a secret club in none other 
than Disney. Yes, Disney has a number of secrets, this being one of them. Club 33 is an exclusive place that Walt Disney himself created, and only the elite have access to it. How do you gain access to it? Well, you can't. It's invitation only. But even an invite doesn't guarantee you entry. And let's say you do become one of the elite who have access to the club. Well, you need to spend about 100000 to solidify your membership. And you have to pay 30000 a year to stay a member. So in the end, is it even worth it? I mean, if you got money to spend, then maybe. I just want to know what goes on in that club. Like, do they just get drunk and watch Disney movies all night or what? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Chichen Itza. Now, this is actually one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. Millions of tourists would come here every year to look at the Mayan pyramid. But since 2006, there is a rule that no one is allowed to go on the pyramid. Basically, in 2006, a woman was climbing down the pyramid when she fell and sadly lost her life. She had slipped on one of the steps that had been smoothed over from thousands of visitors' footsteps. So in order to prevent this from ever happening again, it became closed to the public. In our fourth spot, we have Paviglia, Italy. During the 18th century, this island was used as a dumping ground for victims of the plague. According to some reports, 50% of the island soil consists of human remains. Later, Napoleon used the island to store weapons, and then in the 1920s, it became a mental hospital. But the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. In fact, one story says that a doctor went mad and started butchering his patients. His life came to an end when he fell from the hospital's bell tower. Now it's believed that the island is haunted from all the people that died there. Now if all that history didn't scare you away, then I don't know what will. But even if you are intrigued and want to go investigate this island, you can't. The island is abandoned and tourists aren't allowed to visit. In our third spot today, we have the old city of Sanaya. This city is filled with beautiful ancient tower houses, mosques, and other architectural gems. But it's most known for its tower houses, which are built from stone and fired brick. They can reach up to eight stories in height. According from local legend, it was founded by Shem, one of the three sons of Noah. But the city is off limits to most tourists. And that's because they face persistent terrorist attacks, civil unrest, disease and famine. There's also a risk of kidnapping, armed conflict, and landmines that you gotta worry about. So they prevent tourists from visiting for their own safety. In our second spot, we have the New York Stock Exchange. In movies, the floor at the New York Stock Exchange is filled with hustle and bustle. You got people running all over the place, pages flying, lines constantly ringing, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Now in real life, who knows what it's like? And that's because no one is allowed in there. Now, for a while, the NYSE did allow public tours, but after 9-11, they seized all tours and haven't let any tourists or outsiders in since. You're only allowed in if you've been specially invited. And in our number one spot today, we have Zheng Su National Security Education Museum. Now, this is a spy museum that was opened in 2009, China. It's filled with cool spy devices like spy cameras, eavesdropping equipment, tiny pistols disguised disguised as fountain pens, even guns disguised as lipstick and more. It also contains a number of highly classified documents. As a result, foreigners and tourists are not allowed. A spokeswoman for the museum said, and I quote, we don't want such sensitive spy information to be exposed to foreigners, so they're not allowed to enter. Also, for those that do enter the museum, they aren't even allowed to take photos. This shows just how secretive and intense this museum really is. They just want to protect its history and spy secrets. Starting us off at number 10 is Bhutan. Situated in the eastern Himalayas between China and India, the kingdom of Bhutan is definitely one of the trickier places in the world to visit. First off, in order to even be considered for entry into this country, a special visa is required. And in order to get that visa, you have to purchase a specified package through an authorized travel agent. From there, the agency will handle the visa application application, but the catch is that you must travel with a group. There is no individual travel allowed and you are required to have a tour operator. If you manage to arrive, your electronics are promptly registered through the Bhutan's Department of Revenue and Customs and from there, there is an additional $200 a day tax 
tax that is imposed, marketed as a fee to preserve the high quality tourism. Now, the good news is that out of all of the countries on this list, this one doesn't seem to be as risky to visit, but there still are a ton of hoops to jump through that make it a pretty strict destination as a tourist. Coming in at number nine, Somalia. Located in the eastern tip of Africa, this country, while not necessarily off limits entirely, is probably not a place that the average tourist is going to be heading to. For starters, in order to even be allowed to visit the country, you need to obtain a visa in advance of your arrival from the embassy of the Somali Republic in Kenya. Now, Kenya is a neighboring country found just south of Somalia, but still, it's a lot of jumping around to get the required paperwork. And once you arrive in Kenya to receive your visa, it's not exactly straightforward either. You're required to pay in cash with the local currency as no credit cards are accepted and no bank machines are on site to get the money out. Now, beyond that, reportedly there are supposed to be some beautiful historic sites. However, due to the current threat of violence, kidnapping, crime, and piracy throughout central Somalia, most outside countries, including United States and Canada's official recommendation is to not travel here under any circumstances. Coming in at number eight, Brunei. To be honest, out of all the countries on this list, this one is probably one of the safer ones to visit in general, but it still takes a bit more work to arrive than traveling to more popular worldwide destinations. In terms of clerical work, you need a special tourist visa for any stay longer than two weeks, and your passport has to have six months valid beyond the date you expect to leave Brunei. In addition, you have to register for and possess an e-arrival card prior to landing in the country and prove that you do not have any communicable diseases. If you can check all those boxes, well then my friend, you actually can enter this country. However, just be careful as Brunei is an absolute monarchy ruled over by a sultan who follows a mix of sharia and English law. So if you break any of the laws, you can be subject to prison. Plus, as recently as 2019, the sultan attempted to establish the death penalty by stoning for gay people and it is still very much illegal to be gay here, so it's not exactly the most welcoming place for many people. Let's just say that. Coming in at number seven, Algeria. Located in Northern Africa, just to the east of Morocco is the country of Algeria, and it is definitely one to be wary of visiting. Firstly, as it has in common with many of the other countries on this list, there are many strict hoops to jump through to even be granted entry into the country. Aside from the usual extended visa, you must also have six months valid on your passport instead of the usual three. You have to provide two passport photos, and you have to provide a copy of accommodation confirmation as well as an authorized invitation into the country that dates prior to your visa application, meaning it's not just somewhere you can decide to jet off to on a whim. Now, while that part may just be some advanced planning, it's only one piece of the puzzle. The big reason this place is officially stated at a high risk level to visit is because many of the bordering countries surrounding Algeria pose a great threat of kidnapping and banditry. Of course, the government of Algeria is doing what they can to protect everyone, but for the meantime, it's probably best to steer clear. Coming in at number six, Eritrea. Located in the Horn of Africa, the state of Eritrea is absolutely not a country to be planning a trip to anytime soon. For starters, the only place you are allowed to visit with the usual visa application is the capital city of Asmara. And if you, for whatever reason, need to travel beyond that, there is a whole other application that you need to fill out. Now, to be clear, the official advice is to avoid all non-essential travel here, and that is because, well, frankly, it's a pretty dangerous place at the moment. Between the threat of violence set out by terror groups and the threat of piracy, it's somewhere that requires extreme caution. Beyond that, there is a lot of tension with bordering countries, and because of this, the military is on high alert. So truly, it is not the place to visit if you don't have to. Coming in at number five, Turkmenistan. Located in Central Asia, the extensive process to even be considered entry into this country is enough to keep your distance. First off, before you are even 
able to think about visiting. This is not a country that you can decide to visit. You have to be directly invited, either by a citizen of the country or by a company. And they have to submit a request to have you enter, and they have to submit a request to have you enter to the state migration service. If the request to have you enter is approved, you will then need to apply for a visa, and upon arrival in the country, there is a migration card that you have to register and pay for in order to be granted. From there, if your planned stay will last longer than days, you must notify authorities and register your visit, as well as deregister once you leave. Failure to do any of these steps can result in fines, arrest, and even deportation. Now, Put aside the leaps you have to make to be allowed to enter, according to official travel advice from the government, this place is a very, very high risk due to tensions in the region with bordering countries, especially for women. So really, it's just not the place to visit. Next up in our number four spot, Saudi Arabia. Officially the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, this country happens to be a bit of a mixed bag of requirements depending on the country of origin the visitor is hailing from. On one hand, citizens from Kuwait, Bahrain, Oman, or the UAE do not require a visa for entry and can pretty much travel freely. However, if you are coming from just about any other country, a special visa application is absolutely required. Now, beyond that, most of their limited tourism tends to be for religious pilgrimages anyways, but even if you are traveling for leisure, similarly to other countries on the list, your application must still be sponsored by a group, organization, or a citizen of the country. Plus, if you are a woman, you're not permitted to travel alone and must be met by either a male relative or male sponsor at the airport. So definitely not the girl's trip destination. But seriously, the official stance is that that visiting this country is an extremely high risk decision due to conflicts with bordering countries as well as kidnappings, so truly there are more relaxing places to choose from. Coming in at number 3, Angola. On the western side of Africa you'll find the country of Angola, and well, once again, this is not the country at the top of my vacation list. Now unlike some of the others on this list, the actual job of getting into the country isn't quite as difficult. It's not really forbidden to visit this place. They just require you to have a visa, a criminal clearance certificate prior to departure, proof of a return flight, and a yellow fever vaccination, none of which are out of the ordinary. But to be clear, this is a very strict requirement because if you don't have it all squared away prior to your arrival, they can arrest or deport you back to your home country. That being said, there are still dangers associated with travel here, but probably not the kind you might think. While it's warm, there is quite a bit of crime, especially in the capital, targeted towards tourists, including kidnapping, mugging, and carjacking, one of the scariest dangers are the landmines. Roads and bridges, both in larger cities and the countryside, are frequently targeted. And honestly, and honestly, you just never know when you could come across one. So just take the official travel advice and avoid this one. Coming in at number two, Syria. I'm sure this one doesn't come as much of a shock, considering what we know about the major conflicts that have been going on here, but of course, that is why I had to add it to today's list. If you google the Canadian government travel advisories, this country comes up in giant red letters saying to avoid at all costs and that if you are here, you need to leave immediately. Sadly, this is due to the threat of terror from organized extremist groups, as well as politically motivated kidnappings by these same groups groups that often result in disappearance or death of a victim. Beyond the already terrifying things I've mentioned, women are especially at great risk traveling here alone, and there is also a major issue with pickpocketing, mugging, and general petty theft. Plus, since 2011, most commercial airlines have suspended flights anyways, so it's practically impossible to enter, even if you tried. That being said, if you fill out the required paperwork, there is a chance you can go, but I mean truly, this place is an active war zone, so traveling there is 100% a bad idea. And last up in our number one spot, North Korea. Now I'm sure most of you knew this one was coming. I mean, it's pretty well known that traveling to North Korea was never the easiest thing in the world to begin with. And actually since 2020, it's been off limits anyway due to the global you know what. However, that wasn't always the case. Prior to that, you were technically able to visit. I mean, well, sort of, depending on the country you lived in. But the hoops you had to jump through to get there mixed with the strict 
conditions that followed in order to be a tourist here made it not only a nearly impossible destination, but a very dangerous one too. When it came to North Korea, the only way to be allowed past the borders was to A, have a valid visa for entry detailing the specific date of arrival, and B, book an official group tour, all of which are government run and owned. From there, if you follow all the strict application rules and manage to actually get in the country, there was no moment where you weren't being strictly watched and guided through what you were permitted to see. Which to me is not how I want to spend my vacation. Okay, but seriously, there are literally so many things that can go wrong and people have legitimately been arrested and jailed for years simply for removing posters from a wall. And even if borders do open up again one day, you are 100% putting yourself at risk traveling here, so just don't do it. Mm -hmm.